Ethereum is starting to make some moves in the market, and today we're going to break down a lot of the reasons why. You guys are not going to want to miss it. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to the Tech Path. All right, a couple of things I want to get into today. First, our sponsor. That is Tangem. If you're looking at self-custody, this is one of the best ways to go into your self-custody journey, and it's very simple. All you have to do is jump over to the Tangem.com website. Right up there in the top right, you're going to see that little blue button where it says Get Tangem. That's where you want to go, and it's going to guide you to the three-card set. That's the first thing you want to do. Get the three-card set. You've got a backup. You've got one you can carry with you. And, of course, now you are in your self-custody journey. Start getting your tokens off the exchanges. Start kind of managing your own plan for your crypto out there. Just use our, our uh, link down below. It does help the channel. All right, so let's get into a couple of points here on Ethereum. Moving aggressively in the after hours, what we saw overnight, uh, Bitcoin also hitting its all-time high. Uh, quite a bit of things happening here. Of course, the one thing I always want to bring up is, of course, Mr. Jim Cramer calling Bitcoin a bubble. This was his little uh, uh, his little point right here is that, is it a bubble, cryptocurrencies and artificial intelligence, not a bubble? I think maybe you look at the inverse of that, you know, crypto, not a bubble, AI going to take some time to get it really uh, moved out. I think we're still a long way from that happening. I also want to go to a CNBC interview that I thought was very interesting around Ethereum and educating some of the mainstream media. Listen in. People are waiting for uh, Ethereum and Ether for, for the ETF. They think that's just a matter of time at this, this, at this point. It does look like it's a matter of time, but it also depends upon how SEC takes it. I think with Ethereum, it's either going to be super easy or it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Also, the big drop in Solana prices up down to around $16 approximately was also because of the SEC naming Solana, Polygon, bunch of tokens as maybe security without I, any proof but we are seeing the technologies coming back and the technology making those tokens really picking God. up the price the adoption of DeFi, which decentralized finance has already like eight billion dollars on new protocols like multi-billion dollar game we are not even talking about millions actually logged there i think eth is right now is very underappreciated you see ethereum the same as bitcoin I see the utilization of those two very different. I feel like the technology tokens, we have not seen the real rallies there. And I think end of this year, we're going to see the real rally, whether it's Ethereum, whether it's Polygon, whether it's Optimism, anything which actually going to push the institutional adoption of anyone who's holding this ETFs, even as a most basic utilization. I don't call them all tokens anymore because the technology has built up so much on all these platforms with real users and adoptions. So we're going to have to bone up on this stuff back here. <laughs> Jeez. Because um, well, like it looks like it's, it's here to stay. All right. I, and she references this, I thought was uh, intriguing, calling them t technology tokens. Uh, totally agree with that in the sense that this technology is pretty much reframing how all things are going to work when it comes to digital content, all sorts of transactional levels, especially when you get into what we will see in terms of tokenized real world assets, all of that coming in. One thing to note right now is you have the countdown to Dencon, uh, the upgrade here on Ethereum, just seven days away. Very interesting timing here. Bitcoin all time high, Ethereum now cracking 3,700. A lot of intriguing things going on. And if you look at some of the stats right here, just to give you an example of where gas fees are right now, I'll zoom in on a little bit of that for some of you that may not be catching that. A little bit high, a little bit high. And, it, you know, timing here for Dincon, because remember, Dincon is really designed to reduce gas fees. That's its major goal. Uh, the question is, how much? Here's a good example, though, of Vitalik talking about the potential for what those gas fees might end up going to. And this is just a, uh, a nice little fun, um, you know, betting pool, so forth, of where the gas prices could go with this new upgrade. So interesting to see. I think it's going to have to be significant to really make a major push on ETH. Here's the thing, though. If we do see a major reduction in gas fees, remember, we're, we're significant gas fees right now, and you know what gas fees mean. That means great rewards for stakers. And with that, if we see a huge reduction in gas fees, this is going to really increase the productivity and the capacity use case of Ethereum as a whole. All right, so here's a chart quickly on uh, ETH revenues just to give you a good look. And the last time we really saw this was back in mid-October uh, of 2021, that of course being the all-time high. Interesting point right here is that this is all happening 
in a period of time, when you think a lot of people that have been looking at the markets here recently saying maybe we have a compressed market because of the acceleration of how fast we're moving to all-time high, maybe that's not necessarily the case. In fact, maybe with ETH, we're just beginning. So it's going to be one to watch for sure. Further into this, this is a good example of the chart. And then, of course, here with Eigenlayer, you've got restaking happening, also growing very quickly. So lots of bullish signals here for Ethereum overall. Another thing is Wormhole uh, is now getting a little bit of activity. This is going to give us uh, cross-utilization of the ETH network. And if you look at something they noticed here in the article, at today's price, what it means is the airdrop will unlock a heady $2.7 in wealth, making it the largest airdrop in crypto history third largest airdrop in crypto history, according to CoinGecko. So that'll be another big factor here, I think, uh, playing into kind of the future of where ETH is going. All right, so ultrasound money, quickly, just to show you the deflate, uh, deflationary rate of ETH, definitely moving down uh, significantly if you compare that to even the happening of what's happening with Bitcoin. Uh, right here, ETH Denver happened. What happened at ETH Denver? ENS. ENS, of course, is a big part of what we've been talking about a little bit here on the show, and that is Ethereum name services and, and what it will connect to in the future. And I'll show you some videos on this here in a second, but just to take a look at the ETH or ENS uh, chart, you can of course see a little bit of a God candle moving right there on ENS for many reasons. And some of them I wanna go to this next clip, I'll let you listen in. Um, ENS allows us to convert human readable names like Lucemans.com or Luke.computer and Luke.eth into machine readable addresses. Ethereum addresses, Solana, Bitcoin, Litecoin, and much, much more. We're here to extend .com and we're here to extend all of the other DNS domains that already exist. Your name will work and you can use it within ENS completely gasless and completely for free right now today. If you want to issue subdomains or change your address based on the current market situation or based on who owns an NFT or give out subdomains to every NFT holder or you want your profile picture to change based on the day of the week, have fun, be my guest. You can store your avatar in here, you can store your banner in here, you can store so much more. Whether you want to store your preferred DM3 messaging profile, encryption keys, header for your banner image, age ZK proof to verify you're over 21 so you can get a drink, your preferred color scheme, light mode, obviously. If your app wants to store your preferred sound that plays when you visit your MySpace profile, be my guest. You can use it as immutable records, copyright, decentralized protocols use it, such as Farcaster. We love Farcaster. Web3 messaging, whether it's XMTP or DM3 or any of the other protocols out there. If you're a Coinbase user, you can get a free CB.ID. Uniswap has it. GoDaddy recently added a Web3 tab. And if you don't use GoDaddy, any other DNS sub provider, it's a couple extra clicks. Okay, fine. So if you have an ENS, a .uni.eth, a .cb.id, or a .lens name, or you name it, We'll print you a card and we'll have a good time. Enjoy Denver. This was the last talk of the days. I went way too fast, but I'm sure it's okay. <laughs> All right. So as you guys know, we've talked quite a bit about uh, Ethereum name service and what it means for interoperability of the next generation of, of the internet. This was just some things they were doing over at ETH Denver. This was the card he was referencing which really gives you the capacity to connect on all these different Web3 communication tools, including things like Farcaster, Lens Protocol, many of those we've talked about. If you haven't checked out our videos on those, go back and look in the channel. We've done quite a bit of breakdowns on those in the past. Further into this, they did something kind of cool. They added even more utility to the ENS cards this year. In addition, uh, this is going to be interactive records, so you can now message anyone on Coinbase Wallet, Converse app, et cetera. So it really kind of opens up your ability to communicate uh, in the future of what Web3 uh, tools are going to be, and especially how ID is going to be done, I think, in the future. All right, just to give you an example of where we are right now, around 2.6 million uh, total domains. I know that is small in comparison to the total number of domains that are out there, but this is where it all begins. And I think this is just another opportunity for the next generation of the internet. Farcaster, of course, as you guys have seen before, We've shown you this, uh, this chart before, mainly growth. If you look at it right now, around 208,000 users. Then, of course, Lens Protocol launched last week. We aired that, and Lens Protocol now over 226,000 uh, profiles also with Lens Protocol. So big growth in this area. If you guys are looking at the potential here of how this is going to be used, all it's going to be driven and riding on Ethereum. So... Very, very bullish for ETH in general. Uh, Kobe EC letter, um, hitting on a couple things here. Meta kind of had a bit of an outage. I think this is kind of a new theme, but the stock fell a little bit because of that. Remember, Meta has talked a little bit about possibly using ENS, which would be kind of interesting to see how that would work in traditional uh, social media 
going forward. Other things that happened at ETH Denver, this was the Genosis cards. Uh, they, of course, launched. This is going to be a new self-custodial credit card, low fees, all that can be basically debanking yourself and being able to operate within the blockchain. This isn't available in the U.S., but they were uh, very present over at uh, ETH Denver. All right, so here's Genosis Pay in action at ETH Denver. Take a look. Good morning from Denver. This is day three of me living completely on chain. Marcos, the CEO of Genosis Pay, came in to Denver. Let's go. And we had a quick lunch at Subway. Cool. <laughs> at Sweet Greens. This nice margarita. Use Menos's card to book the Uber. Do you accept crypto? No. <laughs> Do Are you no sure? Problem. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. This is Jen from Stripe, and we're just having a dinner. Do you accept crypto? No. <laughs> Let's see. Can you wonder? What do you mean, like, you build this Ooh, card? Yeah. Let's go. All right, so if you haven't learned about, we, we talked about and have done a video on the Genosis card. Essentially, this is kind of the next generation of utilizing crypto assets through the traditional mechanism of, you know, credit card services and merchant services. All of that, I think, is going to be pretty cool going forward. Uh, Van Eck launches an innovative NFT platform. It's called Segment. Uh, this is basically a platform designed to let users uh, fractionalize digital assets. This is something that has been brewing but now is available. And Van Eck, of course, has been one of the leaders in terms of institutional finance guys. We've had the Van Eck team on here a couple of times. I think they get it. I think these and others are starting to really understand the use case of where not only Ethereum, but also NFTs are going to go. I want to go to a clip that kind of explains a little bit more about what they're doing. Listen in. This platform that we're launching Wednesday is called Segment.io. Ultimately, it was thought of as sort of the what's at the end of the rainbow or at the end of the roadmap for the Vanek community, but it will benefit the, the entire NFT community because we're actually offering a tool for minting free NFTs where creators can uh, add their terms of use, whether personal or commercial, even incorporated Mintangible.io's uh, IP toolkit. Um, and then we have a multi-sig wallet safe, we call segment safe, so that users can protect their assets before they click on malicious links. Um, but you could bring your pudgies, your squiggles, your punks, whatever, you could fractionalize those into a, a limited amount of keys is what we call them. We're going to try to bring on some real world asset partners that are tokenizing, let's say, wine or watches and, and bring those on. But you, know, you get into something like a tokenized real estate, that's another animal, right? I mean, I want to get there. That's probably like the holy grail when you think about how much real estate's valued around the world. But my understanding is that the earliest that you could even get that license is like uh, June of 2025. So a lot of things happening. I think, again, you know, traditional finance starting to really get their head around what this can mean for uh, really the future of finance as a whole. And I think also collectibles. Collectibles are going to be a big part of that. And he talked a little bit about wine and even watches as being part of this for, you know, fractional, you know, verification and, you know, provenance. I think that is another untapped market yet to truly see use case, but it's coming. It's coming very fast. I want to go to another clip. This is Kathy Wood talking a little bit further about the future of ETH. Listen in. Chris Berniski, um, you may know him. He was our first uh, uh, crypto analyst. He decided, you know what? We should have a meetup between the Bitcoin and Ethereum supporters. And we had a a, 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 such a productive talk that I went out and bought Ether right away. We own, you know, I already owned a lot of Bitcoin um, because it was so convincing that there is a place for both. Yes, we're um, very excited about the Ethereum network and Solana. Good to see Kathy is pumped on uh, ETH and Sol, which is, uh, I think, keeping her mind open to really what's happening. Obviously, you know, Arc is one of the. Uh, Bitcoin ETFs out there. So for that to happen, I think it's still a very positive thing. SEC is delaying the decision on BlackRock and Fidelity's Ethereum ETF proposals. Uh, they are soliciting public comments. The other thing you have to kind of consider here are the dates involved. 21 days out right now, the comments are due. And then the rebuttal is due in 35. So still looking at, if you remember the first clip we did at the front of the video, is is this baked in right now? I think this is still a question mark as to whether or not the SEC is going to get this approved. I feel like this is leaning very positive for the Ethereum uh, ETF. 
I think it's just a matter of time before uh, most of these financial institutions kind of have done the same thing with Bitcoin ETF, and that's putting pressure on the SEC for approval. All right, if you guys are not uh, subscribed to the channel, make sure and subscribe now. It's very simple. Just hit that little subscribe bell. Hit a like on a video. It does help other people kind of explore things. And by the way, if you're not in the diamond circle, get in now. We have a new connection over on Telegram as well. So you can get in on the diamond circle. All you have to do is follow the link down below. It'll get you into a, I won't call it a secret, but it is a private Telegram group that's only available for our diamond circle members. Catch me on X at Paul Barron. Catch you next time right here on TechBath.